Alrighty folks, another fine night of not getting any sleep, so makes it perfect for me to do delicate surgery on things that I probably shouldn't. So what do we got? We got a 1466, machine not powering on, had impact damage six months ago, I've been working until now, we had the orange LED, but that's all we get awesome everybody loves a machine like that that's great uh, let's go overhead mm, we got enough light no nope, naturally the automatic exposure doesn't work for crap seems oddly blurry too hmm no, overblown. Nah, I don't know. Don't know, don't care. Wait, I should care. People get upset. I'll start crying about how they can't see enough detail. Uh, let's see, Monday. Monday was a bit of a roughie. So, um, yeah. What went wrong with your Monday, Greg? Hey, Paul Howes. Hey, Zentech. Sutterbridge. Ah, and here's Lethal One. Complaining Lethal One. Such a whiner you are, Lethal One. Shipping damage. No, I think this is um the six month ago damage that they're talking about. So it was working prior to that and now it's dead. Now that's the mag safe area, so maybe there's just something wrong with the mag safe, it gave up, but it is giving an orange light, so but on the other hand it could be a clone charger, so it's just dumping out the orange light regardless. I guess we'll find out when we get in there. One day, I'm gonna take it slower with the unscrewing of these pentalobes. The bad habit of racing along too quickly and scratching up stuff. Okay, panel off. Fair whack of dust and yeah, I can see some splatterings in there already. <sighs> well, yeah, there's. Bit of compression damage there, but nothing too bad. That's disconnected. Yeah, where's my labels? Battling software issues for a client. Made appointment for the dentist tomorrow at 8 a.m. So what, do the client knock your teeth out, or the dentist is your client? 4263. 4263. Hey, Tranquil the Cat. Hey, Margarita. I think it was only a day and a half I took off, was it? Great. Samsung drive. That's going to be trouble anyway. Oh well. Uh, anyway, we've got a 165 board here. Let's pop it open and see what happens. Select power. Plug in our trusty chipmunk, which doesn't fit in that port. Fair enough. We'll stick it in the other side. I don't normally like to stick it in the other side there, but no, oh well, this will do. 20! And nothing else. Oh boy. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go with. Mm, let's see. I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna gamble on it being today. Is it gonna be BIOS corrosion? RTC clock corrosion or SMC corrosion. Hey RTC, hey Ken Skeets. Ah, Mr. Boyd, hello. How are you? And handy dandy. Dead PCH, well we're going straight for the nasties. Alright. Looks like we've got some ballsy text going at it there. Clock, SMC. A little bit of a Tough to p 
purple there for some reason. Oh, the damn microscope camera's not active yet. I'll just wait for it to come up. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. We are live. Oops. There's something growing underneath there. Oops. Bad year 1950. So if there's enough people in here, we can basically just guess everything and one person might be right. Hey, Dr. No. That is a weird looking thing. It's like a perfectly rolled little lint ball. How very curious. <sighs> These damn hexagonal cut sparkly glitter things everywhere all the time. I've heard it's because they actually come probably from uh, people's fingernail polish or something. Something like that. Or just random glitter things. I suppose there's enough random glitter things in life. It's not a dung beetle thing, it's a lint beetle. Ooh, I've not had corrosion on that before. This is the SD corrosion, but that shouldn't be causing it, but yeah, it's definitely an unusual place for me to see corrosion. I'll just mark that so I can remember to come back to it. But yeah, I can't imagine that would cause it. Unless it's taken out thunderbolt or something. Right, let's get this board out. Hey Brian Sunderland. Uh, Highgate Hill in Brisbane. I don't know Highgate Hill in Brisbane. Then again, I was in Brisbane. I lived in Brisbane back in the mid 90s, so a bit of time's gone on since then, hasn't it? About 25 years, quarter of a century. It's unbelievable. Furball beetle, that's it. Yeah. It's funny, I went to Brisbane on a holiday, my first ever holiday as a young adult, and um, it was great. It was fantastic. It was a marvelous holiday. So much so that I um, changed a hell of a lot of things in my life, and then I moved down there to start working in Brisbane. And it was terrible. I just was not happy down there. So it's um, a bit frightening how you can have a two-week holiday somewhere and love it. But then when you actually go to live there, you hate it. I guess that happens it'll probably a little more often than not. Zentech. Currently using TS100, not cutting it. Any recommendations? FX uh, 951. Or FM203, I guess. I mean, they're not the world's best, but I think they are far more than adequate for the work we do. In what way are you find the TS100 not cutting it, as in it just keeps sagging with the thermal transfer, doesn't uh, quite get things hot enough? Last few days, you blew your two hot air stations. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> you need your hot air. I gave away my last hot air station that I had spare. Um, so I should be careful. I should probably g get another quick as a standby. I do wonder about JVC sometimes perhaps being a bit over the top for what we do. Well, let's face it, we're just, we're kind of like orthopedic surgeons or um, trauma surgeons. 
our stuff is not exactly delicate work, we just hack and save, hack and save. Yeah, this is different. Yeah, I can already see that the corrosion is not the normal sort of patterning that we see. Oh man, my nose is giving me hell. I did mowing yesterday and I think all the grass stuff and all that's still embedded in my system. Hey Richard Bicker. Nope, getting there, getting there. Okay, so backlight's down and out. A bit crusty down and out. SMC is like the beach side. I get quite a few of these SMCs like that. Oh look, we've got a purple bead there. Should drill a hole in that and make it like a jewelry. So it looks like is that corrosion in that corrosion bias is fine. There's a fair bit of dodginess up here. Looks like a cat hair. I have to say, the usual culprits are not showing up. I mean, unless short cap on the LED backlight is actually the maker, but I would expect to see more behavior out of the power supply. I'd expect to see at least try. Brian Sandler, we moved from Kingroy when the sons went to UQ. Ah, oh, okay, Kingroy. Yeah, I used to live in Nanango. Yeah, probably like the early 80s, I was in Nanango for the Tarong Power Station coal development. We used to visit Kingroy on most weekends. A quick trip. And we didn't go and get scones from Joe, Flo rather. Oh, the backlight driver is voluntarily cactus. Wow, that is really out of... There we go, that's better. That cap in particular looks nicely shattered. Hey Spectator, haven't seen you around for a bit. Well, it's not a short of cap, but it's certainly not a healthy cap. It's a whole lot of mess there. I'm not sure I can blame yet that. I'm just going to check the board view and the schematic. Get on your hook, you damn little... What's that programming? Guess I better create a new job anyway. 5VSO, alright, so if, if there is a short in there, it'll be taken out 5VSO, so we'll just clean that up anyway. Alright, kudo, good luck waking up with that very little sleep. Hey Joshua Fitzpatrick. 
Yeah, I'm not going to try and measure anything at this point. I'm just going to be the janitor. Because that looks spectacularly nasty. Hey, Sonia. Uh, there should only be one cap there as far as that. One big cap and then a little cap. It looks right to me. We're taking off the driver as well. May as well do it in one hit. some messy stuff. Uh, yeah, I haven't even, I haven't been drinking for almost 20 years and yet for some reason I feel kind of hungover this morning. That whole sluggish, want to go back to bed type feel. Feedback looks fine. Yeah, there's no pad left on that part. Or at least I don't think it is. I'm sure it doesn't seem... Uh, is there a pad there? Oh uh, yeah, actually maybe there is. I thought I was hitting circuit board for a second there. Seasonal disorder? Probably not. It's still pretty damn summer-like here at the moment. I think it might actually just be the histamines kicking me around. Can this be done using a magnifying instead of... Um, well, Eduardo, I must admit, I have done some work in the past using just a desktop magnifier, like a two and a half or five times magnifier. If you've got youthful eyes with good vision, then you can get some of the work done. But a lot of this really... Yeah, not really. When you get down to things like the anything below 0201 parts, it does start to get a little bit difficult. Hey, I am six skills. Yes, daylight streaming. I know. It offends me too. But I figured I'd missed the last couple of days. So I kind of had to make it up. 
I mean, I've repaired the um, I've repaired the clock crystal area and the um, traces on it in the past just using a desktop magnifier, but it took a long time. I had to take a lot of photos. I was basically using the desktop magnifier to guess where I was, and then I would take photos with a macro lens, check the photos, see that I got it right, and then you know, proceed from there. It was a fairly protracted process, but it did work. But it's not something that I would have liked to have... Certainly wouldn't like to do it now. I'm just actually going to plug in the mag safe and see if we get anything better than zero now. Or 21 or whatever it was. So we don't need our... We don't need our backlight driver for this. To actually turn on. Put our chipmunk in. Oh, it was still stuck at 21. Damn. Someone did break off a piece of the radiator fins. 25. Yeah, let's see if we've got... I'd say we don't have PMC plus 4 l That was to be expected. Uh, before I go any further, I'm going to take the um, uh, the the heatsink off and see if we don't have an exploded PCH. CPU is a goner. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then I will also check the resistance of the CPU. Our PCH appears initially to be intact. I'll check around the um, fillet of the chip and see if it uh, has any puncture holes in it. I'll also check the resistance of the... 13, that seems pretty good. Well, the CPU certainly hasn't shorted. And we do not have any cracks or gapes, so that's good. Let's we'll put this back on for the meantime so I don't mess up the CPU by accident by scratching it or chipping it or anything like that. So it looks like a Nell may not be at fault today. Hey Prater. Yeah, I'd say this broke off from the original impact that I had because it is all in this area. Alright, so we're quite dead. And as expected, the backlight circuit wasn't the fault. I mean, it was going to be a fault later on. But uh, I want to have another look over now. Let's see if I can find a genuine culprit. Oh, there we go. There's our culprit. That'll be it. Yet again! The 51980. It's like I'm having a run of this. Nothing unusual there. 
anybody who knows any any sort of work knows that all these things come in clusters see all the corrosion just bubbling up over here So none of our estimates were correct. So we're all going to give it a coronary bypass and it turns out I actually just had a brain tumour. Ah, oh, for goodness sake, get off already. I swear my quick is actually sufficiently out of calibration that I'm running at too low a temperature. Lethal, you're supposed to sit them down and put them through an intense 10 second course on everything they need to know about MacBooks and electronics and everything like that. So they understand. Alright, let's see if I've actually got any of these damn chips anymore. I've got some on order, but uh, that doesn't help me now. Nope. Ooh, you've got one. Lucky me. Man, you don't look too bad. <laughs> yes, 10 seconds. That's all the time you need to teach anyone about everything about MacBook repair. It's easy stuff. Anyone can do it. That's why you shouldn't be ripping people off with your stupid high prices because it's an easy job and I'm only bringing it to you so that you can make a living not because I can't do it I'm just trying to be helpful man I certainly don't follow the what would Rossman do methodology. If I followed that, then I'd be ripping off JTAGs every day and blaming other people for my inability to use software. I had a fun one this morning on YouTube, someone left a comment that um, I had faked a board repair or something. <coughs> um, they could tell because I had reflowed the network controller on the board. And I was like, what the hell? It was like, it was on a, a SUS board or something like that. And I thought, that's pretty crazy. So like, why would I even bother faking something like that?
I can understand people faking some things, like maybe iPhone repairs, or yeah, maybe they roll back after they've found out what the fault is and do it again so that they can seem like they're smart or smarter. But um, yeah, on a generic piece of junk laptop board, it's like, okay. Anyway, people like that, you just hit the remove from channel button and that's it, problem solved. Of course they'll go along and they'll say, oh look man, he removed me because I called him out on his bullshit. I was like, no, I removed you because you're just not worth talking to. There's no point even trying to reason with you or explain anything. Because in your mind, you've already made up your mind that this is a great conspiracy. And there's no monetary reward for me to sit there and tell you otherwise. So you win the prize. The Banhammer prize. One of my sons is living in Kingroy, he's an auto electrician. Yeah. No, nah, it's a small world sometimes. Botched up 5 volt chip job? What are you talking about, lethal weapon? What's botched up about it? it sounds like fighting words to me. Hey Bryce, how's it going over in New Zealand? The beautiful country where elves and and the short people live. What do they call them? Hobbits, that's it, yes. Elves and hobbits live happily in harmony. And now, how do you even find the energy to come on to YouTube streams for other people? Don't you work hard during the day? You should be exhausted and just want to go home and crash. The order's already shipped to now. Or at least that's what someone told me. Mind you, I heard you just got some new batches of flux in, so it means I'm getting the dank old crusty stuff again hey we're up let's see if we get a green blinky blinky it's 165 so it shouldn't take too long to give us blinky blinky we've still got to put the backlight on <sighs> hey green blinky blinky Green Blinky Blinky is one step better than Fan Spin. Fan Spin is okay, the heart's alive, it's beating, but Green Blinky Blinky means the brain is also alive. We don't take cheap cop-outs here and pretend that a board is alive just because the fan spins. We go the whole way and make sure the brain spins as well. And now I've got to fix up this stuff. Fun and games. I uh, see, Anel's sitting there trying to defend Rossman Group right now. But really, if they were genuine technicians and not the Shartlands that they appear to be, then they would actually get themselves some of those chipmunks and prove that their boards are actually alive. Oh yeah, now that um, shelving you did was um, rather spectacularly hilarious. I like the wobble factor. Call it uh, dynamic shaping to suit the load. No doubt you've been told by a million people how to do things better or whatever, a million different ways. But i got to give you credit, you actually did it. I can't stand doing those sort of shelves. I prefer to do it um, cross-notch, or if we end up like what you've got, I just nail on a backboard, it keeps it all stable. But credit to you for doing it. It's hard work, 
it's fiddly work, it's annoying work because of all the damn little bits and pieces you've got to do. But I see you cheated and used a nail gun, so you lost a few points there. Hey Pedro, how's it going? You thieving scum. Stealing all my cheap and easy MacBooks from down in your southern lands. The only reason why I tolerate you is because you've got a cute kitty and you like kitties. And that makes me accept you. It's okay, you know. Everybody has that one of those kind of Homer Simpson spice racks in their lives. I've got plenty of them. I just don't show people. The bottom is actually just nails. Sonny gave me a nail gun. Oh, okay. Was it an electric nail gun or was it something like a pass load gas nail gun, explosive nail gun thingamajig? Oh, hi hi measured the wood. Oh, okay, yeah. You were doomed from the start then. You can't let hi hi do stuff like that for you. He's a scheming little chap. He'll make sure that you look bad. All right, that's deliberate. It'll get cleared up when the um, hot air hits it. All right, I need to clean up those pads a bit. Shelf is perfectly good for storing feathers and stuff. <laughs> oh, it's harsh. Yeah. You see, my father is a carpenter by trade, so I had a certain degree of standards to live up to whenever I made stuff. And for many years I did not live up to that. And in fact, I probably still don't. But I'm a little bit better than Kia furniture for now. I Ikea, sorry. The lethal one, they're holding hands because it doesn't matter if they're holding hands and of course it's going to get washed up and fixed up in the reflow. If you were listening to me, you would have heard that. I mean, they're not meant to be holding hands. I'm just saying that to sound, sound like I know what I'm doing. I'll clear it up. Well, I'll do it now. There's too many people losing their minds. Yeah, i got to say, for the cutting of the wood, why was the line missed so many times? I mean, clearly someone drew lines on the wood to get the measurements and then ignored it. Alright, get ourselves a replacement driver. Thankfully now the world can rest easy because we actually have stock of 8550s again. I just gotta find them. So use the first one to cut the stand. Oh yeah, that's that's a good way of getting a nice slowly increasing size. Actually no, it's <coughs> that's more of you. 
use one to cut the next and then cut the next using the next and so on and so forth and you get this progressively increasing length of wood Lethal one, I don't need backlights from Rossman Group I get them much cheaper locally overnight delivery without having to be engaged with your cartel of parts Bum, bum, bum. Oh. And these are genuine ones, genuine not soldered before ones, genuine not reballed, pulled off a bump, pulled off a donor board. Which, to be fair, means I've got lead-free balls, which is going to make them a pain to sit down. God damn it, buddy! You sat down yet, or what? Yep. Hey, Jane, Zimmy. Lethal one, what are you, an Indian giver? What is that, racist? Of course it is. My balls are perfect. Now, don't forget we've got that other corrosion on the other side that we forgot about. This junk. It's going to be fun because the plastic there will want to melt. So we might give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of mafia level protection. And now that screen is very happy living with me now. It tells me stories about what you guys did to it. I wonder how bad that damage is. Yeah, it's pretty damn crusty in there. I think we'll take all three up the top. No, I didn't get to take them, they just left. That screen came straight from the Bermuda Triangle, by the way. Ah, oh, that's good. It'll, um, because I'm on the Southern Hemisphere, it actually turns into good voodoo. So it should bring me all sorts of fun stuff. Like missing planes from 1942. Well, Eduardo, it depends on uh, you know who you're getting to do the job or whatever. I mean, sure, I ask. Oh, you maybe you're talking about me. Basically, in a, uh, in Australia without postal cost it's uh, 329 for Mac boards and that's pretty much it
Well, 329 is the standard price. I mean, it depends on if there's issues with, you know, a screen fault or a, um, yeah, if, if something other than the main board is at fault, then obviously the price has to be adjusted. And now, don't forget, that's also Australian dollars, not US dollars. Yes, Aussie dollary dues. As opposed to Trump thumps. Yeah, it's been naughty and try to take three at once. Taking them is actually the easy bit. Getting them back down and splitting them out is the hard bit. Hey James, let me, uh, we've got a 00165 board that basically just stopped working after a while. Two fifty for non retina, three twenty five for retina, four twenty five for USB C machines. Yeah. Then again, you are in New York. You can get away with that sort of thing. That said, I do agree. I probably should change my pricing strategy because I am finding I'm getting a little bit stiffed out of some jobs, and then it, by the same token, I'm also probably hitting people a little hard for some other jobs alright that triple and alright yep still get iPhone 6 repairs even get iPhone 5S 5C SE repairs yeah we didn't burn things too bad here a little bit of melty uh, no one's probably even going to know that that was repaired Yeah, the AU dollar is about 60, 65 US cents at the moment, which is pretty abysmal, but I actually like it. I like it because I sell my software in US dollars. I think I'm going to give them another heat sink. MacBook Air 1466 backlight and LED cable connector. Um, so what, you're saying that it needs a backlight replacement and also a, an LVDS connector? I have, I'm guessing you've already pulled it apart and inspected it, is that correct? So this is the other problem though, is that uh, when people have a look at their stuff and then evaluate what is wrong with it, I mean, it, it's I don't have a massive problem with that, except I can't guarantee that that will be anything that's wrong with it or actually what is wrong with it because plenty of times we get boards in here and on the description it sort of indicates what is believed to be wrong but it turns out it's something else completely so I really have to treat most jobs as a blank slate as if I know nothing about them I've been caught out too many times like I said there's nothing personal against people or their skills it just seems to be a reality of that's just what happens. Okay, let's throw this in a test chassis, make sure it comes up. I'm not going to put it back in the customer's chassis at this point. Now, where's my test chassis? Uh, I had to do a Wi Fi connector the other day. Oh, that's always fun.
We'll even put the fan in this time. I'm glad Harold invented that chipmunk thing because I was going to come up with something that plugs into the fan socket, which wouldn't be very portable at all. Oh, for goodness sake, what is wrong with you, fan? Flippity do. It's like a piece of junk in it or something? There we go. Just needed a bit of coercion. Lethal one, why are you downplaying my software? Don't make me fly over there and beat you. My software saves you guys thousands of dollars a day, or makes you guys thousands of dollars a day. How dare you disrespect me. Okay, we've got a fan spin. You can't see that, but that's your problem, not mine. <sighs> we don't get a bong because... yeah, I don't know why we don't get a bong. That screen is not energized. Yep, screen's not energized. As opposed to no backlight, I can see through it. So we do have more issues. That is probably the fault of an L. Let's see if it tells me that it's got CPU. No, it's got CPU active. It's trying something. Seeing if there's a blinking folder yet. No. So I'm alive. I've got CPU activity, but I've got nothing else. That's weird. Let's try again. Diagnostic, uh, Trad D, do you want to expand on that rather than just leaving it as in a random comment like that? It's like saying capacitor is at fault, and it's like, yeah, oh, which one? I'm just waiting to see if. something fell out. I'm just going to check the voltages. Uh, 
Uh, lead sensor, maybe. I mean, that's only one possibility. You want to watch the MMA? Well, go watch the MMA. Nothing on backlight, of course. What about our 3v3 to the display? Nothing on that. Okay. Load connector doesn't... No, it's, it's latched in. Uh, it's not going to go any further. Tell you what I will try. And see if it's generating anything on its display port. Yep, it's generating on DisplayPort. I've got a flashing folder on it. So, um... Yeah, let's see if I can actually show that to you. There we go. Blinky, blinky, blink. So it is alive. We've just got issues with the display. Maybe I botched up the LED driver. This one's not going as quickly as I would like. It's kind of blown out of my 20 minute window now. Hey, I should check the fuse. Maybe. But that would be. Uh, I'm checking it anyway. Shut your faces. Yeah. No great surprise there. The problem really isn't that, um, uh, it's not sensing the display for whatever reason. And the backlight balls are perfect. Okay, so maybe we've got a trace break here or something that I didn't see. Uh, zero carbon, that's why I'm saying it's... We've got nothing at all, so it's not even trying. And even the 3v3 zero, so it's just shut it off. So I can't see it, so it shut it off. Hey, then again, maybe, 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 maybe I should PRAM reset it. Maybe I should try it in the actual original. Oh, wait, no. The problem I had before was different. There was a um, 
A while ago there was a board that I had and it would not work with a specific screen. I could put the board in another case and it would work and I could put the screen with another board and that would work but the two of them would not talk to each other. It was quite amusing. Is it broke near the large chip? Which large chip? Oh man. Everybody, <coughs> everybody should buy the board view software so they can play along. It's funny, it's actually, the screen has still got, that's crazy, the screen has still got the question mark folder on it, even though I've disconnected it. That is weird. No, I didn't check the backlight voltage before the fuse yet. I just want to go over and see if I've missed anything profoundly obvious first. That's the other thing that can cause a lot of contention with um, chat and repair videos is when people do things in different sequences. Like I'm chasing down one path and people are going, you should be going down this path. And it's like, yeah, well, I'll get that to path to that path later when I've finished chasing down my path. Okay, they're fine. And it's not that either path is wrong or right at that time. It's just... Yeah, they have different um, train of thoughts going on. And then of course it descends into a great war. And eventually somebody... says something about Hitler and it's all over. I'm just checking over again. This board has been pretty different for corrosion and things like that, so I'm giving another look over before I start digging around more hey Andrew yeah it has been long We weren't above the clock chip, apart from the cat hair there. Hey, Def Pom. Uh, Eduardo, the problem is we don't even have... It's not turning on... The uh, We're not even getting the 3.3 .3 volts to the screen. And the 3.3 3 3 is required to chatter to the screen to inquire with it and say, hey, are you a screen that I'm allowed to talk to? Yeah, it's not even doing that. What I'll do is I'll check to see if it tries to bring it up. Let me make sure there's no junk in this one. Yeah, you look clean. This one I was going to check, yes. The only one possibly at risk up here is this resistor here because it goes from there to underneath the ball uh, to underneath the chip but there's nothing else so I'll just take that resistor off and double check that we have a good pad under there though again we're not getting the 3 volts to the panel in the first place but I'll check it anyway while I'm here for this Yeah, that looks like it should be pretty intact. Nothing marginal there.
Paul, you're talking about this one down here. And that just goes to those two balls. It is a little bit, um, yeah, flaked off, but it's intact. Okay, let's get my extension lead. Canel, you got yourself one of these yet? Yeah, pop that up. This is always fun. Where's my chipmunk? This is how you do it with two hands. Gonna stick that there. And we're gonna see if we at least do get some starting of 3.3 but 31 volts, what? okay we're holding 3.2 steady there and the screen looks energised it's going to be a crack up if I get um, display. I would really laugh if I get display. We God damn it, we get display. And backlight. Oh, joy. No, I should be happy, but I'm actually not that happy because I don't know why. Is it intermittent? Did I just not plug in something right? Even though it all looked alright. Was there a piece of junk in there that I didn't see? Now all the uncertainties come into play. Did I sacrifice the chips to the wrong deity? What was it? No carbon, now I've got everything. That's the thing. And now I've got backlight and image, everything. Everything's come up. And I, ah damn, I need to scratch my eye, but if I scratch my eye, I could get coronavirus. I might scratch my corona. Uh. Uh. Hey, Carl. Yeah, it's all good now. That's the, <laughs> that's the annoying thing. Because I didn't really change much. All I did is I probed around. I resoldered that resistor for the... Um, yeah, just doesn't make a lot of sense. Which means there's a strong likelihood that this is going to come back and bite me in the butt. I'm going to ship it off. 
and the person's going to have it and it's going to work for a few days and then I'm going to get an email one morning saying the customer is quite unhappy they paid a lot of money for this repair and it's already back to being broken again why are you such an incompetent repair person hey that's mine I give away my fans Yeah, Carbon, I went nuts with that a few weeks ago and I found a pram reset, fixed it up. But I don't like to I don't like to prescribe pram resets for everything. I think it's sort of a false fix in many ways. But sometimes it actually is a legitimate cause. Alright, let's see if we get uh, blinky folder again. We're 230 volts here in Australia. We used to be 240 though. We've got the flash over, we've got the bong. We used to be 240, anything between 240 and 220, but it is now, it's revised down to 230 now is the Australian voltage. Believe me, it's handy being at the higher voltage sucks in some ways because you can die a bit easier but um, it's handy for the fact that you don't have to use so much such thick cables for everything okay we've got blinky folder oh Calvin well, can't help you on that one then but I feel your pain because yes I've yeah, been through that quite a bit quite a bit frustrating as hell I don't want to use the damned solid state drive I suppose I should and then I could put a privacy filter on it Damn. I don't like using client drives because I don't know what's going to come up on screen obviously so I will stick the privacy filter on. Dave Jane tested his at 2.45. Tested his what? We had a bong that time. Oh yeah, we're booting. Screen's a little dim. Ah, 245. Yeah, that's a little high. Fortunately, at least most of the equipment now, because it's all switch mode, it doesn't really affect it. I mean, it's great that now we have these devices that will work on 90 volts up to 250 volts. Uh, any So probably going to go into the um, you've forgotten your password boot you might see something there you go yeah. okay it's a worker. So you can. Oops. Touchpad works. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm going to go in the ultrasonic now. Whoa. Any pointers on a 3437 fan off, on off, never ending? Ooh, yeah. Those sort of ones, yeah, they're rabbit holes to hell. I've still got that one that does, it's the 165. It shouldn't be doing anything like that, but, um, oh, and I have got the 3437 where it 
starts out all right and then by the time it gets to the last cycle where it should turn on completely it just gives up but i found it's heat sensitive and it's heat sensitive near the cpu which means it's probably the cpu or the pch in which case i i ended up just swapping the board with one of my um prepared earlier boards as it were I've already wasted way too much time on that one. That's the trouble with rabbit holes is you, they draw you down and you get excited about chasing it and before you know it you're in the darkest dungeons and a big fat spider's coming to stab you in the chest and eat you. No. Got a 165, no backlight, burn 34, pin 34 Resist the top right by chip 170 ohms, we need 200. Um, is that in circuit or is that when you've removed the resistor? Because if it's in circuit, that'd be about right. If you get a resistor value higher than what it should be in circuit, then you've got problems. But lower is quite normal because of the law of resistors in parallel or resistances in parallel I think that's oops bit take the stickers off so they can put them back on Stupid glitter. Yeah, right, that's an ultrasonic one. Oh, oh god, the body. It hurts. Alright. That's it for today, for the moment anyway. I'm going to go get myself a coffee because I am really, like I said, I'm really feeling like I've got a, not a bad hangover, but I've got some kind of a hangover. I think it's a lack of sleep and the fact that I slogged my guts out doing the mowing yesterday. I'm just not feeling it. You know, when you just can't get out of that um, sloth phase where you have the haze and everything like that. So I'm glad we fixed the board, but I don't think I can go on for too much longer for the moment. Uh, sand soldables that's ooh, that's weird yeah all right okay so i appreciate everybody sitting around for the last however long that's been hour and a 20 or something like that wow hour and 20 already man i've got to pick up my speed on board repairs this um this is pretty appalling one o'clock in the afternoon probably time now for me to uh, get a bit of lunch have a coffee uh, good on you buddy and um better get some packing done got to send off orders that people have already paid for so i guess it's probably the right thing to do is to send them back to them yeah call me um a bit of a moralist but uh maybe they might get upset if i don't so <laughs> all right thank you everyone i'll see you later catch you next time